Hello and welcome to Harness Money. The Roth IRA is one of my favorite tools that I use to build wealth, but there are some pitfalls that I want you to avoid. Every single financial product has advantages and disadvantages. So you want to know what are the rules of this account in order to maximize it and make it your vehicle to financial success. So today we're gonna to talk about all of the mistakes that you want to avoid on your journey to becoming wealthy through a Roth IRA. And now, a Roth IRA is a financial account where you contribute money tax-free. So you pay the tax on this money today, but then any gains that you make within that account are then going to be tax-free down the line. Now, this is an IRA, an individual retirement account. So the government has designed this account to be a part of your retirement plan. It's not going to be a replacement for Social Security. Hopefully, it will be a supplement to your Social Security or the income that you have in retirement. But there are definitely some mistakes that you want to avoid. So let's jump into some of the things that you want to avoid. And number one, this was definitely a mistake that I made early on when I was putting money into my Roth IRA, and that is having multiple accounts. So with a Roth, you are allowed to put in a maximum of $6,500 this year. So each year, the maximum that you can contribute goes up a little bit as inflation creeps in and reduces the buying power of the US dollars. So every year the government tries to increase the account so that you can put a little bit more in. But the maximum that you are allowed to put into this account is $6,500 if you are under the age of 50. And you can have multiple accounts. So it doesn't matter how many accounts you open. You could have three accounts or five accounts, but the most that you can put in to your account in total is $6,500. But you really want to think about, yes, you can have multiple accounts, but every time that you open another account, that's just a little bit more paperwork that you have to keep track of and report on when you do your taxes or when you reach out to the government. So I try to just limit the number of actual accounts that I have open just to make my life more simple, just to make my financial situation more simple. So you can have multiple accounts, but I like to think about having the least number of accounts because it's difficult to transfer assets once you have put them into Fidelity or Schwab or Vanguard. Transferring, transferring those assets over to another provider is not the easiest thing to do, and you will have to keep up with the paperwork. So really think about where you are opening these accounts and how much you're putting into each one and your assets before you actually do it because you'll have to keep track of that much more accounts and paperwork. All right, the next mistake that you definitely need to avoid is make sure that you invest the money into your assets. It can be a savings account. A Roth can just be a place where you park money and you put it into savings or if you just leave it in cash within your account. But most likely you're gonna want this money to grow over time. And if you don't actually invest into a particular asset, then it's not going to grow. So I don't care what that asset is. If it's a stock, an individual stock, an ETF, into real estate, into a private company, some type of asset that aligns with your financial future with your financial goals, you want to make sure that you are investing that money that is parked in your account. Now, now, once you actually have your investments is the next mistake that you want to avoid is that when you invest inside your Roth IRA, any of the gains that you receive cannot be withdrawn until you are 59 and one half which means that anything you're putting into your Roth, you are going to have to leave in there essentially until you retire, until you reach that particular age. Any of the principal, any of the cash that you actually put into your Roth, you can withdraw at any time, no problem. But any gains you receive from dividends 
or from when you sell a stock or rental income that has to stay in your account until you are 59 and a half or there is a penalty that you will pay and it will count as regular income on your on your taxes so just really keep in mind that this is for retirement that what you are investing in within this account has got to stay in this account until you reach that magical age all right we just talked about that you are allowed to put in sixty five hundred dollars into your account you are not allowed to go over the sixty five hundred if you put in more than the sixty five hundred you will be penalized for that so don't do it just put in up to the maximum that you are allowed to contribute and that is every single year so the next mistake that i have on here that you wanted to avoid is the calendar make sure that you deposit your money by the deadline and because every single year the clock resets you get sixty five hundred dollars per year so hopefully if you're investing into this account for decades you're going to have a ton of money at the end of it you're going to have your pot of money at the end of your investment journey but you want to make sure that you make sure that you are contributing those dollars in each calendar year up to April 15th, because that's generally the filing date for your taxes. So you have up until the 15th to contribute for the previous year. But I actually like to front load. I like to front load my investments within the Roth IRA. So I try to max it out as early as possible because the magic of compounding happens over time and the earlier you start the more compounding that happens so the earlier that you can put your money into this Roth account the better your performance should be over the long run so just really keep that in mind about the calendar what is the date and make sure you get it on time now a Roth IRA again it's a retirement account so you want to really think about your beneficiaries if you uh, if you have a family or if you have people that rely on you or that are dependent on you, you definitely want to have a beneficiary named so that instead of going through probate or having to go through the court system, this Roth will pass directly to your descendants or to a trust. You could have a trust named as the beneficiary. If you want your money to go to a charity, you may have that listed or that contact person. So just anybody that you want to receive these funds after you are gone, then they need to be listed as a beneficiary. Don't make the mistake of leaving that blank. And then finally, the last mistake that you want to avoid is not diversifying, not being protected. So a Roth is simply an investment vehicle. It's just an account. The money that goes into your Roth is then invested into assets. And just like any other asset, any other company, you could choose wisely or you could choose poorly. You could choose to invest in Apple or you could choose to invest in Enron or Theranos and have it go to zero. So make sure if you want more safety that you are diversified in your investments. Maybe you keep some in cash, maybe you keep some in an ETF, and then maybe you keep a portion in individual stocks. Whatever your risk tolerance is, that is what you need to apply to diversification. I'm a little bit more aggressive within my Roth with my investments, just because I know that I've got many, many years until I will ever actually need this money. So I want it to grow as large as possible, and I'm not worried so much about um, choosing just one single ETF and being that diversified. I like to choose individual stocks. That being said, I also hold a good amount of cash. Within my Roth, I keep a nice cash cushion just in case I ever have an emergency. I need to withdraw this money. And I'll mention that as one more mistake that you should avoid, and that is just being too concentrated into your Roth. Yes, it is an incredible investment vehicle, but you have to really put it as a part of your entire financial picture. You don't want to invest more than you can chew. You don't want to become investing, investing poor, putting all your money into investments so that you don't have anything to actually 
live and survive on in your day-to-day -day life. Just invest what you can afford to invest. If that's $5, then just put $5. Don't try to max out this account if you can't max it out. You want to enjoy your life and live a great uh, retirement. You can do both. All right, so those were the investing mistakes. I've got, uh, to recap, the multiple providers. Don't choose too many providers. Don't make the mistake of not investing the money. Don't make the mistake of withdrawing your gains early or exceeding the contribution limits or missing the deadline to contribute to your Roth IRA. And then finally, your beneficiary. Make sure you have a beneficiary and make sure you are fully divested uh, fully diversified within this account. So I hope you enjoyed this video and remember, make good money choices. Till next time.